Hello and welcome to Conversations with Bend Film Festival. I'm Beth Jasper and I'm the Associate Documentary Programmer for Bend Film. Today I'd like to introduce to you our guest director Kevin Clark. He is here with his documentary Samuel Herbert Boardman, The Father of Oregon State Parks. Thank you so much for joining us today, Kevin. Glad to be here. Thank you. That's a long title, but you had to get that all in, right? <laughs> uh, yes, yes. It's a little wordy, but I figured to summarize the whole movie right up in a couple of sentences. Okay. So um, talk to us about how are you a filmmaker? Are you an employee of the state? How did you come to make this documentary? Well, uh, I do a lot of hiking and backpacking. And uh, Samuel H. Boardman Corridor is a state park just north of California and uh, or uh, just north of the border. And so I do a lot of hiking through there. And uh, there's just beautiful places where you can go down to the beach and spend the whole day by yourself. And I don't know, after the third or fourth time, I thought, well, you know, who is this named after? So I looked it up and then I saw you know, it was the first state parks director. And so then I'm a former journalist. So I was curious. So I started digging in more. And then finally I went to the state archives and thought, you know, I'll get into a little bit more and see what I find. And it, the more I read about him, the more I enjoyed, he, you know, he's an early conservationist for the state. He, you know, he worked tirelessly to obtain, you know, more than a hundred parks for the state in his 20 years. I mean, he was just a really interesting character. So I just kind of took off from there. Okay, well, so had you ever made a film before? I made one, I finished one in 2018. It was about uh, wild horses in Oregon. Oh, wow. I remember yeah. that one. Okay, so, um, so tell us how long, well, first of all, talk to us about, I mean, you had a lot of information. I yeah. mean, that's, it's like, yeah. Like, so yeah. how did you, how did you gather the information? What, what format was it in? And then how did you decide what was going to go in and what was not? Well, um, yeah, this was much more complex than my first one. The, the wild horses, there's, there's quite a bit of research, but a lot of it was doing interviews and editing those down. And this was 90% research. So I went to the, I worked in conjunction with the Oregon State Archives, the Oregon Historical Society, the city of Boardman, um, you know, the state parks department, they allowed me to go in and, and copy images from their archives. And in the state archives, I went through dozens and dozens of boxes of transcripts of his writings. And I made, I copied them with my camera the 35 millimeter camera, went home, you know, I had, I don't know, five or 600 pages of information on him. And there were hundreds of pages of information from other areas, from the city of Boardman, from various museums I went to in Hefner and, and, and around the state. And so I just started to, you know, mow through them basically, which took quite a bit of time, just trying to figure out you know, how I was going to approach it because I wanted to tell the story through his writings, which I did. And, you know, I, I realized, you know, now the voice of Boardman in the, in the movie was my own, it, but those are all his words right. take, taken from, you know, various sources that I found. And, uh, you know, you know, there's, I looked at it like so many different ways, but I, I just wanted to get it down, distill it to the fact that, you know, he was an early conservationist who really cared about the state. He, he cared about the land. And there were so many issues that he wrote about back then that seemed so pertinent today about caring for the lands that we have, making sure we don't sell them all off, you know, and have all the forests mowed down because he grew up in the East and, saw that happen there and you know he was trying to ensure that he could protect as much land as as possible so you know those are the kind of the keys to what i found about his personality and and he had the 
the perseverance to, you know, take that on. So. Wow. I wonder what do you think about the fires that we've had recently? Oh, I, yeah, it's, he's pretty interesting. One of the letters I actually read in the archives, he had talked about, you know, because they had some big fires back then. And he, he suggested that they, you know, drop fire retardant from planes back then. And they, that was not a common thing to do. Wow. And, and so in the, the reporting that I was able to do on him, there were so many things that he seemed ahead of his time on, on conserving the trees and, 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 and the land and making sure it's locked up for future, just in, in tourism and how important that could be to bring people in, you know, to raise money for the state. And, and you know, he was always looking for future generations. I mean, one of the ways he was able, you know, he basically started during the Great Depression. So, you know, you know not a lot of money in the budget. And, it, you know, the Parks Department then was in, within the Highway Department. And so most of the money being spent was on trying to expand highways for commerce and so forth. And so he had to fight for every cent that he got. So he was very good about talking to people like wealthy people saying, hey, it wouldn't be nice to have your name remembered through history as the person who gave all this wonderful land. And, and he was able to talk other you know, people you know, to either volunteer their land to give it to the state or at a reduced price. And, you know, on, you know, basically on next to nothing of, you know, of a shoestring budget, he was able to compile this park system, which is just amazing. I mean, there's just, you know, the top parks in the state were based on him, uh, you know, the ones that he got. And some of them he, he spent 20 years trying to get. Wow. And, and some of the parks, you know, he, you know, he got little chunks of land and built them up you know, to, you know, five, 6,000 acre ones, because each time he'd go back and see if he get, you know, this is a nice little park, or this is the watershed that leads to the Silver Falls and the things. And it's, it's really funny, because he was quite humorous in his writings. And sometimes it's frustrating, frustrations that he had with, you know, the, the, the political process would sometimes weigh on him heavily, and it would kind of just I'm squirting out of his mouth in rather humorous ways at times. So he had, a, he had a, quite a sense of humor. And, and that's one of the things I tried to get through in some of the ways. But, you know, I must feel like, you know, that's a whole nother story in his writing. So. Right. But I think he did a good job on the movie as a whole. And I think I feel after watching it, I feel like I know him a little bit. You know, there's so right. much information in there. It's hard to, you know, pick everything up. And he lived until what what year? 1953. So he was still around. OK, so wow. yeah. yeah, he did that at a really difficult time period. Like, right. When did the um, when did the um, state parks not when were they separated from the highway department. Do you know? 1968. You got all this down, don't you? Yes. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. 1968. And what, what led to that? Do you know? Well, it's interesting in his writings, you know, when he was talking about with the highway department in, in, you know, while he said that, you know, the people in the highway department were supportive, he was very savvy politically, I would say, from looking at his writings, you could see the kind of mumblings in the background. But he said in the future, it really needs to be its own department because we'll always be the ones who are behind the need to build highways and to keep the highways in good shape. So he, he really felt before he retired, he had suggested this, that you know they, they do eventually become their own department, so. So unfortunately, he didn't live long enough to see the separation of that. Um, so what do you consider the most difficult thing about making this documentary? I would say the most difficult thing is just, you know, going through, you know, the, literally the hundreds and hundreds of pages of information about him and trying to distill it into something where I felt you know, you gave a good impression of who he was and how much he cared about the environment, trying to get in the information, you know, his sense of humor in there and the way he saw the world, you know, through 
through his eyes, but mostly how much he cared about the state and the land. And, you know, that was the hardest part, trying to, because there was so much more information. It was just, you know, and it's just like when I looked at it again the other day, you know, every time I look at it, it's like, no, not that. No, that should have gone out. You should have blocked this. You know, it's just, but that's how, I, I, you know, I think. That's how it is. Yeah. Probably everybody does that. Every time I look, I, I, I plan on making like a 20 minute version of it, oh. a half an hour version and an hour version. You know, I'll, I'll give um, copies to the city of Boardman since he's the one who founded their town. Right. And, you know, I think, you know, it could be utilized, you know, um, you know, for educational purposes, obviously, too, as one of the, you know, state's uh, important people. So. So uh, what do you plan to do with the documentary? You, you obviously you um, sent it to the Ben Film Festival um, right. and we screened it. Um, mm -hmm. What any other thoughts on, on what you want to do or what direction you'll go in with all this? information with the movie? Uh, well, I'll probably try and put it in for some other festivals. Uh, you know, to me, it was most important to get it out around Oregon and maybe the Northwest. Um, you know, I don't know whether it's too tied to Oregon to be of interest to other areas, but I think it's, it's a good reminder of just how back then there were people that really did care and have their heart in the right places. So I think nowadays we're, we're constantly trying to protect our land from various forces. Uh, you know, I think that storyline is still as important today or maybe more important than it has ever been. So right. I think from that aspect, the story has, has some legs to it. And have you thought about submitting it to PBS or one of the... Uh, I did send a copy to them to look at and I haven't heard back from them yet, so. Okay, okay. So you plan to submit it to some other festivals and you're gonna make a 20 minute version. That's really cool because I don't know how you're gonna do that because <laughs> your film has so much in it. But right. do, you, do you have any idea of how you're gonna, what you're gonna put into that 20 minute version? Well, I, I think for people who are mostly interested in the parks themselves and the natural beauty, I think I can take, distill his history down considerably. And uh, there's uh, a group in Boardman City itself. They have, it's, I think it's a Sage Conference Center where visitors come into town and you learn about the area's history and so forth. So I thought maybe a 20 minute version, you know, that might be enough for people to sit and watch because most people aren't gonna sit there and watch a 90 minute movie when they're going just to see something. Right. You know. And I, you know, I figured even if I broke it into, you know, 20 minute segments, you know, then if people wanted to see more, they could reference or they could find it online. So, right. right. You know, so and, how, how was your film financed? Was it self-financed or did you? Self-financed. I, I retired a, a couple of years ago. I've worked for newspapers in the Northwest for 30 years. Oh, wow. And uh, so I've, been a photographer and a photo editor for you know decades right. and uh, the last 10 years of my career we were doing video you know and, and that was mostly you know one the three minute segments because that's you know newspaper readers don't you know aren't going to watch much more than that but right. I always felt like you know once we went to the web that you know we could do anything and that, you know, there's no reason that, you know, if you could find the time, you could do documentaries, you could do other more in-depth studies visually in your community in the state. So, so when I retired, that's what I started to do, so. Well, you can certainly tell in your film that, that you have a journalism background because it's so well, so well done and you knew what to edit, you know, what you liked, what you didn't like, um, and, um, it just, it's really, really nice film. I wish we could have seen it on the big screen, but maybe someday we'll be able to do that again. Yeah. <laughs> so um, any other comments you want to make about the film or where well, it's going? Well, it ties into the next year's 100th anniversary of Oregon State Parks. And, and one of the things I found out is when he came in, and that's when I came into the fact that, oh, that's gonna be the, 100th anniversary, so I thought, you know, it might be nice to do this. So, and for your previous question, 
Um, I, I financed it myself. Um, I never need much of an excuse to travel around the state taking stills and videos. Uh, the rest of it I've, I've taken on, you know, my preference is, you know, not spending six weeks at home editing uh, endlessly uh, <laughs> and doing the chunks and moving them around, you know, the, right. you know, what everyone goes through on the editing portion, but, but it, the experience has been really good. I feel like with each movie, I'm getting a little bit tighter. And every time I look at the movies, I go, mm, <laughs> work, this didn't work. And then I tighten it up again. And, you know, once again, when I reduce these to an hour or 20 minutes or a half an hour versions, you know, it's just really good practice because these days, a lot of people just don't have that time. Right. To watch an hour and a half. Well, maybe nowadays they do. Maybe I should. Set it <laughs> right. you know, I want to watch the last show that's on. You know. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, um, thank you so much for being with us today. We really appreciate that, and thank you for making this extraordinary film. It's, um, folks, watching this Q and A. Um, if you haven't seen it, you should, and um, hopefully we'll know where that is sometime soon. Um, so Samuel Herbert Boardman, the father of Oregon State Parks is the film and um, you should all take a look and we appreciate you, Kevin and um, best of luck on what you'll do in the future. Okay. Please keep us apprised of that, okay? I will. All okay, right. thank you, you so much. All right, bye now.